If you're a fan of the new Bronco, then you know that it's really hard to get one without paying a ridiculous markup and getting it for a decent price. But today we're gonna talk to you about how I got my Bronco for a pretty good deal. If you've seen one of our latest review videos of my Ford Bronco Sport Badlands, then you know towards the end I talk about how I've always wanted a Bronco. Well, <laughs> we got one uh, and it has a really interesting story behind it because Yes, we kind of been planning on me getting a Bronco at some point, but actually going and getting one was kind of spur of the moment in a way. We started looking around. We had known that the order banks had just opened up. So we actually went to our local dealership because I had never driven an actual full-size Bronco before. Which one did we drive again? It was a Bay Sasquatch with the 2.7 liter engine. It was one of three Broncos that they had on the lot and it was the cheapest one. I believe the MSRP was somewhere around 45,000 which is still more than what we're looking for, mm -hmm. uh, but they actually wanted $10,000 over and that was on all three of their Broncos. And the other two Broncos that were there, we got to take a look inside and they were good Broncos, but the dealership had also added upgrades to them, such as bigger wheels, bigger tires, in order to also jack up that price, which I've also heard a lot of dealerships are, using, are doing these days. So we obviously didn't leave with that Bronco. So we started reaching out to other dealerships, even went to another dealership to talk to somebody who specialized in ordering Broncos. We went through all the different packages. We built a few different ones. Um, but there were some things that we were not able to order. Can you talk about that? Currently at the time of filming this video, you can't order a manual Bronco. You can't order the Everglades, which is a special model of the Bronco, and you can't order a base Bronco. So that brings the, the lowest price Bronco kind of up quite a bit because at a minimum, you have to order the Big Ben. Nobody really had a clear answer for us about certain questions with the order banks, such as when is it closing? Some dealerships thought that it had already closed. Some dealerships thought that it was open the week after. Some people were debating on the different things that you could and could not order. There was not ever a clear answer. It made me a little bit anxious about ordering one or even trying to order one because I don't even know if they would be able to put it through. You know, by the time that they got through everything, would they be able to actually order it? And not just that, the price of the Bronco when you're sitting down at the dealership building it and ordering it is subject to change. Meaning that when it comes in, it could actually be a little bit more expensive than what you thought you were gonna pay for it. And not only is price a concern, you also have to take into consideration how soon that Bronco is gonna come in. The more packages you add, the less probability you have of it being built right away and probably you also are gonna extend the time that you actually receive that Bronco. And that will also affect your trade-in because you're not gonna trade in your vehicle until you actually get that Bronco to the dealership and you're ready to sign, take the keys, and take it home. And not just that, some of the people that ordered Broncos, when the Bronco actually does end up coming in, there are little mistakes that was something that they didn't want. One of my family members ordered cloth seats originally in their Bronco and they ended up with leather. But if they had tried to change it after the order was already submitted, then their Bronco would go to the end of the line. So they ended up keeping it. Other things about the Bronco and ordering is that a lot of the Broncos that are actually on the lot right now are orders that somebody did special order, but they decided not to take it. And a lot of the reasons that we are finding manuals out on the lots is because the dealership messed up when ordering the Bronco and they ordered a manual instead of an automatic. So whenever the people came to pick up their Bronco, they can't drive a manual, they didn't want a manual, so they chose not to go with it, which is really unfortunate after waiting so long for what you thought was gonna be your perfect vehicle. We decided to see what else was out there, so we checked local inventory online, and we actually came across this Black Diamond two-door manual hardtop Bronco. And so I decided to reach out to the dealership and see if it was available for a test drive, um, at which point, I was actually speaking to a woman and she was like, yes, absolutely. But then I got a phone call from a number that looked very similar to the number I was messaging. So I answered the phone call and it was actually the manager or the manager of the internet department, kind of unclear, uh, just reaching out to me to make sure that I understood that this Bronco is indeed a manual. And he questioned me a few times on it. Finally, I told him, I have another manual vehicle. I know how to drive stick shift. And at that point he kind of dropped it, but then he ended up taking over um, the actual test drive and communicating with me about this actual car. Anytime you hear somebody's an internet manager, please take that with a grain of salt. Um, a lot of those online sales reps will call themselves whatever, whatever they want just to get a sale. Um, but essentially what happened is they ended up splitting the deal. So Erica was now working not only with a guy at the dealership, but also a woman there as well. And then by the end of it, we actually ended up working with another guy, meaning that we were talking to 
to three different people at this dealership. After speaking to the internet manager, he let us know that, hey, if you want to come test drive it, you can. We drove down there. It's about an hour away from where we live. And by the time we got down there, the vehicle actually wasn't on the lot. It was actually another hour away at a different lot and was getting transported back to the lot that we are currently at. So we're sitting there and the sales guy is trying to work the deal with us, trying to get us to agree on numbers before we even see the vehicle. And I just made it very clear to him, you know, if I test drive the vehicle and I like it, there was a certain price I was going for. And if he could do that, we had a deal. Uh, so he's like, oh, we could probably, we could probably make that work. Uh, the vehicle finally arrives after we wait 45 minutes, an hour longer than they said it would take. And we took it on a test drive. So when we got back, I thought we were going to be leaving that night because he seemed to want to make the deal with us. Unfortunately though, when we got back into the dealership to work the deal, all of a sudden he changed his mind and they were not really willing to negotiate with us. So I had told Devin beforehand, it's not going to break my heart if we walk away, I understand. So we walked away. One of the things when we said we were going to walk away, the salesperson did mention to us, well, maybe things could change tomorrow. And Devin even started to ask him, what does that mean? And the salesman just kind of mentioned some different scenarios in which maybe something could change in our favor towards the negotiation of the Bronco. But when we left there that night, I don't think we were expecting him to reach out um, with a brand new deal for us. The biggest thing is you need to do your research when buying a car. You need to understand the current market. And one way to do that is to reach out to other dealerships. If you go to Ford.com and you try to say, find you know a Bronco near me or whatever, they're essentially just gonna do it by geolocation and find the closest dealership to you and try to put you in contact with them. So what we did is we actually went to Google Maps, put in our zip code and looked for every dealership that was within driving distance. We wanted to know about every Bronco available on every dealership lot. So we contacted them individually. We actually put it into a spreadsheet where we we listed the vehicle, the MSRP, and what the dealership was asking for above that so we could understand kind of, okay, are these guys realistic? Are they asking for 20, 10, five, or $2,000 over? We had done a lot of research during that day too, still never hear hearing from the first dealership that we had looked at the Bronco at. That was until I was on my way home from work at about 3 p.m. I got a text that said, hey, are you available to talk? At which point I said, I could text right now, I can't call because I wanted to have what he said documented for my own personal needs, right? So he gave me a pretty crappy offer because I had made the mistake, and I will say this very clearly, I made the mistake of letting them know what I wanted to pay for my monthly payment, not what I wanted to pay for the vehicle. Now, the reason that's a mistake is because what they did is they went and sent, when I signed the credit application, I was already pre-approved, but they said that they could get me a lower deal. They always um, say that. They always say that. I knew that they couldn't, shouldn't have signed it. I did anyway. Uh, they sent out my credit, got it checked by a bunch of different people, and they were able to get me down to my monthly payment. But the only way they were able to do that is by upping my APR and upping my term, meaning that in the end, I was still going to be paying more rather than less, which is what I really wanted. I told them, nope, that's not what I want. He tried to argue with me with about it a little bit, got a little defensive, and then he said, well, I guess it isn't meant to be. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> it was an ouch, but I just respond, I didn't respond at all because. No response necessary in that situation. Why would I respond to somebody telling me that they weren't gonna work with me? That makes no sense to me. So then I started making a negotiation with another dealership that was willing to actually deliver the car to me, which was pretty cool. Um, while in the process of that, I get a call from a number that looks like the number of the other two people from that dealership I was talking to. So I was like, hmm, I'm just gonna answer it. I answered it and it ended up it ended up now being the sales manager of the dealership. And he's talking to me, basically telling me the same thing that his other salesperson had already told me, except he's trying to explain to me what APR is. I explained to him, I understand fully what APR is and I understand that they're not really giving me a deal. At the end of the day, I'm gonna end up paying more and that's not okay with me. So after a little bit of talking back and forth, he said, hey, if I could get you, and I'll tell you what the deal is later, but if I could get you this deal where we get your monthly payment close to what you want, would you take it? And I'm like, yes, I would take that. It ended up working out in our favor because I'll be honest with you, the other sales person that I spoke to kind of made me angry and I didn't have to deal with him anymore because now I was dealing with the first girl who I actually liked and the sales manager over the phone. 
So it ended up working out in our favor, but it was definitely a process that took a long time. And usually when people go and step onto the lot and look at cars, they want to leave the lot with a car that day. And sometimes that's just not realistic when we're thinking about it because you want to be an informed buyer. You want to know what you can get out there, what other lots there are, what people are willing to negotiate, what your trade-in value is. You want to understand all of that before you purchase. Otherwise, you might get swindled into a deal that may look good, but after a few months of paying the monthly payment, you realize it's actually not good at all. We also got this dealership to pay off my Bronco Badlands, which some other dealerships were not willing to give me enough to pay it off and I did not want to go into negative equity in purchasing a new vehicle. I would have rather have kept my Badlands than have gone into negative equity. So the dealership ended up working out a pretty good deal with us, but it was definitely something that we had to push for and we had to be informed on what we were doing beforehand. At the end of it, realistically, why we ended up going with that dealership that we initially walked away from was because after seeing what else was out there, they actually gave us the best deal after we had walked away from them. Multiple times. Multiple times. Um, the other thing that I do want to say in this video too is it's very helpful, and I'm speaking more so to the ladies out there, sorry. It is very helpful to have somebody like Devin who is willing to sit there and help you through this process because a lot of the times, and I don't know if they do this on purpose or not, a lot of the times a woman on a car lot, they tend to assume that they could probably, I don't wanna say they, they could assume that they could do whatever they want, but what I mean is, is that they assume that we're less informed. So if you're gonna be a girl going on a car lot by yourself, either you need to be really informed and really assertive or you need somebody there to kind of back you up because I definitely said a few times that I was gonna walk out and he kept trying to talk me into staying and Devin finally, him saying, no, it's time to leave was what stopped them and we were able to get up and leave. Not that they would hold me hostage, but I am a very nice person and sometimes I'm like, I feel awkward. Before we move on, we wanna let you guys know to please subscribe to our channel, AutoJourney at YouTube.com because we will be doing a review video on this Bronco soon and I'm so excited to show you how awesome this car is. And then when it was finally our turn to go through the financing paperwork, everything was exactly like we said it was. They didn't try to sneak anything in on us. There was no upselling here. So yeah. that was the important thing. When we actually went back to the dealership, there was no longer any negotiation. So the sales manager, who I believe was one of those guys that sits in that glass office where all the salespeople run to and they change, you know, they exchange numbers and stuff like that. It seems like he actually did the deal for us. So when we got there, they did have somebody come in, run in real quick and say, here, this is the price that we're selling you the vehicle for. This is what your monthly payment with Erica's pre-approved credit union was gonna be. Everything looked good. When we got into that finance office, they did not even try to upsell us anything, which honestly, I appreciated. So, I did too. So all that negotiation paid off because they knew, hey, this is this is what she's comfortable with and you guys got us to the, the price that we wanted. So don't try to add anything. My Bronco is a two-door 2023 Bronco Black Diamond in iconic silver. And down at the bottom there, you can see that the total MSRP was 42,870. That is what I paid for the vehicle. This is the 2023 Ford Bronco Black Diamond Edition. Now, a lot of you guys might be asking, what makes this a Black Diamond Edition? All of the different tiers have different special things. And I'm gonna show you what makes this Black Diamond. One of the first things you'll notice when you look inside is this really awesome material on these seats here. This is called marine grade vinyl. Now I really like this personally because if I spill something on it, it's not going to stain it. It's easy to wipe off. It's easy to clean. And if I were to take off the top at some point, the sun is not going to beat down on these seats so much that they crack or blister or dry out. These are actually the same kind of material that you would see on boats, meaning they're meant for that kind of thing. If I were to jump inside really quickly, Obviously, we have our gear shift here, as well as up here, we have what's called the rear locking differential. Now, this is really cool because this is a little button that I could click right here if I really needed it, or if I was switching into different GOAT modes on my vehicle, it'll automatically do that for me, which is really cool. I also have some auxiliary um, tabs right up here, which these are add-ons on different Bronco editions too, but it was really cool that they had these on here. So if I ever did want to add lights to the roof or light racks or anything like that, these are already pre-wired. So all I have to do is add it on, wire them to the actual light bar, and then I have switches to turn them on nice and easy. The next thing I want to talk about is the floors, which I have to get out to show you and that's okay. Underneath here, if you look, you can see that it actually has some kind of cloth material, but you lift it up, 
the floors are actually rubber. And the cool thing about this vehicle too is that there's drains in this car. So for some reason, something spilled and I really needed to rinse it out with some water or something like that, there are drains that I just pull up and it goes right out to the bottom of the car. Another thing that makes this Bronco special is right here we have wonderful rock rails. Now these are metal. They are meant to add extra protection from rocks that you might hit while off-roading. One other thing about the Black Diamond is right here, these wheels are super awesome. Now let me tell you, yes, they are the same wheels as on the base Bronco. However, they are painted black, which I really, really liked. It matched the whole vibe of the vehicle, and it makes my car stand out in comparison to a base Bronco. Underneath, we also have an upgraded underbody protection, which is gonna go ahead and help to protect my vehicle when we actually go off-roading. So I'm super excited about that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Car buying really can be a journey, but with a little bit of persistence and research, you could be an educated buyer and get the car that you want for a fair price. Please let us know in the comments down below your car buying journey. The good, the bad, the ugly, the easy, the hard, whatever it is, let us know. We want to hear it. And please like this video down below. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye guys.